Hello to everybody out there in viewer land. My name is John Simpson. I hope you are doing well. In this 3D2 tutorial, I will be covering some basics of motion capture and uh, just animation in general, primarily character animation. We're going to look at three different pieces of software today. We're going to start by looking at Mixamo, which is a free service from Adobe. Uh, it provides high quality animations along with high quality character models as well as a rigging service for your own characters. Uh, Ipisoft is markerless motion capture software that we have available to us here at Butler Community College. And then finally we'll take a look at 3ds Max and how we kind of bring it all together. So to begin with let's go ahead and look at Mixamo. Mixamo is a free service from Adobe. You do need to sign in using your own personal Adobe account. You cannot sign in using the one that the school provides for you. It's not set up for that. From Mixamo we have access to hundreds of characters and maybe even thousands of animations that we can apply to them. So take some time, kind of look through here if you, if you want and pick a character you like. I was using uh, Passive Marker Man earlier so that's one I'm going to stick with. Currently he does not have any animations on him, he is just simply in the T-pose and if I just wanted the character, which I do, I can download just the character in the T-pose, so simply download. It's going to ask what format we want it to be in, for us FBX binary works great, and T-pose is always my preferred pose to start a character in, so we're going to go ahead and download that. Now if I want to add an animation, it's a simple matter of coming and browsing through all the different animations that are here. We'll go ahead and just maybe grab the taunt. And once I click on it, it will be applied to the character I've chosen. Now there's options for each of these. They're all a little different, but in this case I could uh, play with the head turn. I could uh, make him lean one side to the other. Or he leans way back. Let's go ahead and reset that. You have an overdrive which speeds it up, character arm space, how far to the arms extend out from the body, and then you can trim the animation if it's too long. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and grab all 150 frames of it. And he does it a couple of times. Let's go ahead and reset that one as well to just grab just the 86 frames in the middle. That way he only does it like twice, I believe. Something like that. Looks like once. Okay, even better. So, after I've browsed and I've selected the animation I want along with the character I want, now I can download that as well. So this time it's giving me a few more options. Again, FBX binary is fine. We do want it with the skin. 30 frames per second and then we don't want to do any keyframe reduction so we're going to say download. Now these two have been downloaded into my downloads folder. I'm going to copy them over to a project folder that I've already started. So I've got 3D2 mocap fall 2022 and inside this folder I have some subfolders. Since we're using three different pieces of software I like to keep everything nice and neat. Uh, we have Ipisoft, Max, and Mixamo. I'm going to go ahead and this was from earlier, so I'm going to create a new folder. Call this practice. We're going to take these in there. Okay. Now the two that I just downloaded from Mixamo are going to be placed in here and these are both FBX files that contain either a model or a model and animation together. Of course Taunt has the animation, Passive Marker Man does not have any animation. So how do we get these into 3ds Max? I'm glad you asked. The easiest, simplest way is to drag and drop it. Import file. That is going to bring it in. Gotta find my character, sorry about that. Um, we'll just grab that. And then we're going to zero this out. Should have put them at zero. Okay. 
make that full screen. If I scrub my playhead, we'll see that it's brought that animation in and it runs very, very smoothly. It's very nice, nice professional animation. Now, we learned the importance a couple weeks ago about renaming our objects. I'm going to show you why it is super important that you rename your objects. Because if I bring in just Passive Marker Man, which does not have the animation, but it does contain all of the same bones, it is going to overwrite my current file. So now I have lost all my animation. Super simple way to do this, of course, is to press Control A to select everything. Go to Tools, Rename which I know is right here, rename objects. We're going to untick base name, we're going to say prefix, and we will call this tpose, maybe an underscore. And then we say rename. Now that has renamed everything, so that it has the prefix tpose on it. So now, when I bring in taunt, It does not overwrite the current file, which is in here. And it brings in the animation with it. Okay, one last thing I would like to mention. When you download the model from Mixamo, you're simply going to get the FBX file. Once you open the FBX file within 3ds Max, it automatically creates this subfolder which has your texture map uh, required for that particular model. So that's where these came from. That's where tantrum.fbm and passivemarker.fbm came from. When I open these within 3ds Max, the FBX automatically creates the texture file. All right. In the next part of this tutorial, we are going to move over to IppiSoft software. I'm going to give you a crash course in that, and um, we'll learn how to make our own animations. Right, we'll see you in the next bit. All right, everybody out there in the viewer land, I hope you're doing well still. We're back in a completely different room, a completely different lab than we were before. And that's because we're going to be using the IppiSoft Recorder and MoCap Studio. Um, first things I want you to do is make sure that you copy your working folder over to the desktop. Don't ever want to work off a flash drive if you can avoid it. And we're going to go ahead and open up Ippy Recorder 4, which is the software that is going to allow us to do our own motion capture. Uh, Ippy Recorder works with a diff variety of different uh, cameras. We're going to be using a Connect for Windows. After we have chosen our camera, we simply hit The next step in the process is for us to evaluate our background, so we click on the background tab, we move out of the way, and we click evaluate background. This is telling Ipisoft that everything that it sees there is part of the background and will not move, so it can basically be ignored. After evaluating the background, we pop over here to the record section, and this is where we're going to actually record our video. I'm going to step out here and demonstrate a few things before I record my video. When you're standing here, you want to make sure you can see your feet and your head. You want to make sure that the camera can see both of your limbs at all times. If you turn like this, it will lose sight of your arm, and therefore it will not be able to track it properly. It is possible to go back and fix mistakes like that. They are time consuming, and so I want you to avoid them from the beginning. Uh, you come out, you will start in a T-pose, you will act out a small action such as giving us a wave or uh, maybe bending down and picking something up. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do. I want you to try real hard though to not face away from the camera and not lose sight of any of your limbs. 
when you're done, you'll come up and you will uh, stop the recording. So let's see how this in action. We're just going to hit begin recording. It will count down. I always like to be in a, in a uh, T pose at the beginning. And then we can do something like simple, like, hi, how's it going? Um, maybe you're a boxer. Maybe you want to throw a few bunches. Um, maybe you just want to bend down and pick something up off the ground. Lots of things you can do. Act out a simple action. When you're done, come up and hit stop recording. From here, we will send our file to stop motion, uh, I'm sorry, mocap studio. Uh, so we're going to hit the little S icon there, and that's going to open up the mocap studio for us. This is where we can finesse our animations. Um, going to specify that I am a male and I am six foot two. We'll say finish. To rotate around is going to be right click. To pan is left click. One of the first things I want to do is I want to align my bones with my information just a little better. So I go to the top and I can say move. And this allows me to move the entire rig and just kind of line it up a little better. Once I have done that, I'm going to come over here to the right hand side and I'm going to select refit pose. That kind of just adjusts everything so that it fits the pose a little better. And then I'm going to track forward. What it's doing is it's trying to do its best to attach the, the bones to where the movement is. Now, anytime the camera does lose track of a limb, it is going to generally not keep track of where it is going. And sometimes things like this happen. All right, so overall, this is a pretty clean little animation. It's real simple. But I don't need to do a lot of repair work to it, which is great. If I did need to do repair work, part of that process would be to select IK and then select various IKs throughout and reposition the body like it should be. Now what we're seeing here is my shirt. Uh, so just, just be aware of that. That's not actually my arm. That's just my shirt. My arm is actually doing what it's supposed to do. I can see the fingers up there. Um, but if it was out of sync, then I could move this, and I could tell it to refit pose, and then I could refine forward, refine backward. Like I said, luckily for this one, I don't have to do a lot of that, and, and I don't want you to have to do a lot of that. So do your best to make a nice, clean animation as much as possible. Okay. So when I'm done with my animation, and I'm happy with it, there's a couple things I do want to change here. Um, so when I'm throwing punches, wouldn't it make more sense if, if my hands were in fists? Well, our software does not track your fingers, but it does allow you to create a keyframe there, and then once you've created a keyframe, you can tell it to be a fist. And let's go ahead and do that for the right hand as well, so fist. And during this part, I'm going to have fists. And then when I come back to here, I think about right there, I will go ahead and add a keyframe. And we're going to say default, add a keyframe, default. And that way my hands will go back to being hands and not fists. All right. Now, I'm pretty happy with this animation, so I'm going to move on to the next step, which is to export it. Now, when I export, I have some choices that I can make here. I can export for the default uh, IPI rig, which is simply a set of dummies that happen to look like bones. I can take those into uh, 3ds Max, and I can attach things to them just like I would a set of bones. And if I do that, I select default IPI rig, export animation. I want to go ahead and put this into my folder on my desktop. So we're going to say this PC, 
desktop, mocap, and then we will go into Ipisoft. Um, and the default is a BVH, which is an animation file, but it doesn't bring the bones, it just brings the information. So what we want is an Autodesk FBX, and I'm going to call this Ippy Rig. Now I'm going to call this Ippy Rig. And I like to do these. I like to export, or I like to center the coordinate system on my character, and I like to export a T-pose in the first frame. So we'll say OK. This is simply asking what do we want to do, and we want to do nothing. We want to close that window. Now let's say I want to apply this to an Ippy soft. Or I'm sorry, good Lord. If I now let's say I want to apply this to a Mixamo character. Well, I can do that very easily by coming down and saying import from file and then finding the Mixamo character that I want to use. In this case, we're going to use Passive Marker Man, and we will say OK. And now my motion has been transferred to him. Okay. The only thing I might do before I do anything else is I'm going to go back to tracking. And there's a jitter removal here, which is just going to remove some of that tiny little movement that is in there. Um, not something I do every time, but I just seem to notice it quite a bit on this one. Okay. Overall, pretty happy with that. We'll go to export. Export animation. We're going to go to our Ipisoft, and this is where we're going to put him out at. And we're going to say underscore uh, passive, and that's fine. Okay. So using Ipisoft, we are able to create our own animations, and we're able to apply them as just a set of bones, uh, or to one of the characters we've downloaded from Mixamo. Okay, the last thing you should do is probably save your project just in case you have to come back and do some editing to it. So again, I'm going to go to my folder system. Uh, we're going to go to Ipisoft, and I will just save it just like that, and I'll say save. Now, in the next bit of this tutorial, we, we will be returning to 3ds Max, where we will bring in our new animations from Ipisoft. All right. See you there. All right, welcome back to the third and final installment of this particular tutorial. We are back in the lab with 3ds Max. And I have already copied my working folder over onto my desktop. And we're going to go ahead and bring in our Ipisoft animations. We'll begin by bringing in the one that is just the bones, just the default Ippy rig. And again, drag and drop is about the easiest way to do this. Let's go ahead and just select hip. And we will make sure that uh, it is at zero, which it is. Am I in local? I think I am. Let's go to world. There we go. thought that was awful random that I got it exactly at zero. Okay, so this is the one that I said I brought in, and it is just the, the bones. Now, we can see the jitter a little more than we could in Ipisoft. So I should have ran the uh, jitter control in this one as well. Nice thing about this is I could come in and I could use this as a set of bones uh, by attaching objects to them, or I could uh, possibly skin this to a different model. Lots of different things I could do with this. Just wanted to see, wanted y'all to see that you could bring it in as just the rig itself. The really great part about this, of course, is the 
combination of the Ipisoft motion capture and the models from Mixamo. So if I bring in the passive man, passive marker man, here he is, and he performs my action that I recorded in Ipisoft. So super super simple once you've done it about a dozen times it does require a few practices make sure you get everything right um, if you have questions of course I'm here for you and I hope you enjoy this and I look forward to seeing what you make